Hello and welcome to MCA Services. In this video we're going to be looking at how we measure the surface area of a sample using gas adsorption isotherms. We'll discuss BET theory and its application to sample isotherms and we're going to concentrate on nitrogen adsorption to quite a straightforward sample but in another video we're going to look at samples that are a little bit more difficult to analyse and why we might want to consider a different adsorbate. Remember the links to our website, that gives more details on various gas adsorption options along with all the other analytical services that we offer here at MCA Services. Before looking at gas adsorption isotherms and the calculation of BET surface area, it's worth considering some background to what we're actually trying to do here. And that means looking at the process of adsorption. So consider that we have a solid porous sample, shown here in blue with pores of different sizes on the top surface. During analysis, we degas the sample to ensure that it's totally clean, and then we dose a gas at a series of pressures, which will absorb to the surface and to the walls of the pores. The gas is shown here as red spheres, and at this stage, the sample, including the walls of all of the pores, are covered in a layer of adsorbate, just one atom thick. This is called the monolayer, and given the volume of the monolayer, it's a fairly straightforward calculation to convert to the area covered by it. In other words, the surface area of the sample. So we start with a clean surface. And for illustration, we've just shown this as a flat surface without any pores or surface roughness. If we introduce our analysis gas, the adsorbate, to the sample at a pressure below atmospheric, we immediately have adsorbate atoms in the gaseous phase above the sample, and that's shown here as red spheres. The atoms in the gaseous phase will, as they move about, land on the solid surface, and when they do, they may just rebound straight in, back into the gaseous phase, or for a short period of time, they may remain on the surface, in which case we say they have adsorbed to the surface. The adsorption is due to the interaction of attractive forces between the gaseous phase adsorbate and the solid surface, the adsorbent, and these are quite weak, such as van der Waals forces. So we refer to the adsorption as being physisorption, or physical adsorption. The enthalpy of adsorption is quite low, certainly less than 50 kilojoules per mole, and once adsorbed an atom will tend to be resident on the solid surface for a short period of time before being dislodged desorbed, and return into the gaseous phase. Now this may be caused by the constantly moving solid surface, or it may be through being struck by another atom from the gaseous phase. Atoms will tend to move between the phases, but at any adsorption pressure, a dynamic equilibrium will be established over time between atoms in each of the phases. For surface area measurement, we're ultimately attempting to achieve the state of monolayer adsorption, whereby the equilibrium between gaseous and adsorbed phases involves the solid surface being covered in a complete layer of adsorbate, just a single atom thick. And it's the formation of this state that is assumed in the Langmuir model, and that's one of the earliest approaches to adsorption. But the adsorption of a discrete monolayer actually forming during physisorption is most likely to be wrong. And the application of the Langmuir model to the calculation of surface area is rather limited in this respect. In reality, multilayer adsorption will also be occurring. So that's adsorbate on adsorbate. Now this is a rather simplified representation of the adsorption process. In reality, the sample will almost certainly have surface roughness, pores of a range of shapes and sizes, and also the presence of charged surface species. The most common adsorbate is nitrogen. Now that's diatomic, it's non-spherical, and it has a quadrupole moment. This will lead to surface science being non-equivalent. Adsorbate will become prefer preferentially adsorbed to certain sites and will be more likely to remain resident for longer. We also need to consider that analysis is taken, undertaken at cryogenic temperature, usually in a liquid nitrogen, so 77 Kelvin. So what we're actually seeing is the condensation of the liquid phase onto the solid surface. But nevertheless, this does give a good representation of the adsorption process leading up to the critical point, the measurement of the monolayer adsorption volume. 
The occurrence of multilayer adsorption is recognised and accounted for in the BET theory, named after its creators, Brunauer, Emmett and Teller. And that gives us the BET equation, which is shown here in, in one of its common forms. Note that we want to solve this for the monolayer capacity, and that's Nm, but also note the occurrence of C, the BETC value. Now this is a constant in the BET equation, but it is of importance when we determine the relative pressure range to be applied, and we will come back to the BETC value a little bit later. In practice, we generate the BET transform plot from the isotherm data by plotting relative adsorption pressure against the BET function. This is shown in the plot on the left side. Isotherm data points in the range 0.05 to 0.3 relative pressure have been used and a linear regression line drawn through them. The slope S and the intercepts I of the linear regression line derive Nm and the BETC value. So finally, knowing the monolayer adsorption volume, we can calculate BET surface area per unit mass of the sample. And we can use an equation like this by incorporating in other known values of the Avogadro constant, the molecular cross-sectional area of the adsorptive, and for nitrogen we almost always exclusively use 0.162 square nanometers, the mass of the sample, and the molar gas volume of the adsorptive at standard temperature and pressure. So returning to the BETC value, in this derivation of C, it's clear that it's a function of the enthalpy of adsorption, the enthalpy of adsorption of the adsorbate to the sample surface. Now adsorption is an exothermic process, and so C can only be a positive value. And since it's related to the BET transform plot by the intercept of the regression line, this intercept must also be positive. And this is an important fact to remember when determining the relative pressure range to apply to BET surface area calculation. And it becomes very useful when analysing very high or very low surface area materials. And we go on to discuss that in a couple of other videos on BET surface area. So to finish with, we're going to just show an example of how to fit the BET range from a, a full adsorption desorption isotherm. And this is the full isotherm of a metal oxide powder that's used as an electrocatalyst material. The desorption branch has been plotted, but we've graded out as it's not going to be used for generating the BET surface area data. The classic BET range is considered to be 0.05 to 0.35 relative pressure. So that's the relative pressure range over which statistically the monolayer is formed. But it's not usually the case. And it's not necessarily correct to just apply this. For example, highly microporous materials will necessitate quite a low relative pressure range to be used. The BET transform plot is shown on the right, and the relative pressure range selected for this sample is shown by the blue circles. That's 0.05 to 0.30. But we have expanded the range to show some of the isotherm points outside of this range not used for the BET surface area calculation and shown here as the red crosses. Looking carefully at the BET transform plot, we can see that below 0.05 relative pressure, the points start to deviate from the regression line as the monolayer is not yet completely formed. Above 0.3, the points also drift from the regression line and this is as multi-layer adsorption and pore filling commence. So using the range we, we have here, the BET surface area is found to be 84 square metres per gram. We also find that the BETC value is 92. Now this is unitless, but the important thing here is that it's positive, which is, as we saw above, is absolutely vital for correctly fitting a BET plot. And the final thing we'll look at is the correlation coefficient of our data points sitting on that linear regression line. In this case, it's 0.99997, and we would use, usually expect this to exceed 0.999. So given a full adsorption isotherm, we've reliably fitted the BET range to determine the surface area of this sample. 
So thank you for watching and please take a look around at some of our other videos. We have more on BET surface area, gas adsorption in general and also our website that covers all of this as well as our other analytical techniques that we offer for investigating sample porosity.